Hello viewers, so as you may know, I got a 4x4 Rubik's Cube and I also learned how to solve it. Now, I'm going to teach you guys how to solve the 4x4 Rubik's Cube because I want to. Now, let's get started. So, let's first, let's scramble the 4x4 up, and then I'll get into some key th things and important facts about the 4x4, which will help you. Okay, now that the 4x4 is scrambled, I'm going to tell you some things you need to know. First, before you can solve a 4x4, you must know how to do F2L on a 3x3. Look at my F2L tutorial, the link will be in the description. Now, you'll also, on a 4x4, the corners are the same as on a 3x3, there's 8 corners, but on a 3x3, the edge is one piece. On the 4x4, the edges are two pieces, and that makes it much harder. And on a 3x3, the center is one piece, on a 4x4, it's four pieces. So we'll just start by making the centers and pairing up the edges, and then we can solve it F, F, like F2L. But once we get to that point, do not skip because there's these things called parries which might screw you up during the final layer. But first, let's start off with the centers. For, before you start solving the centers of the 4x4, you must pick which side to do it on. I'm going to pick the white side as most people who cube uh, so usually do the white side first on any cube. So I'm starting with the white side. So basically, of what you want to do in this step is you want to find a white centerpiece, another white centerpiece, and you want to make a bar. So, say I'm gonna, I want to pair up these two pieces, I'm going to turn these two layers to make a bar. Now, I'm going to do the same, but a different two pieces, like these two. Now, as you may notice, if I just do this, this piece also goes away. So what I should do is I should turn this face and then turn this up. Now, these are a bar. Oh, but wait, it messed up these. We can't do that. So what you want to do, you want to turn this up, turn it again, and move it down. Because then, these two came down, and these two are still paired. And after they're a bar, you can simply just turn them around to the, turn one bar to the opposite side, and then it becomes a white center. Now, after white, we can do the yellow center. As you see, there's already a bar here, but there's a, there's a yellow piece here, another yellow piece here. Now, to pair these, we could turn this face, and then turn this face as well, so that if we turn it two times, they pair up, and then we can put it into place. Oh no, I messed up a white center. Well, put it back. What we could do for this time, same. We put these two bars on top of each other, and move this up. It displaced the white, we would turn it two times and turn it back down, made the center and fix the white. Now you have successfully completed the two most important centers. Now we can move on to the rest of them. Now on a 3x3, the color scheme is set because the center pieces don't move. But on the 4x4, you have to make the color scheme on your own. And if you fail to make the right color scheme, you can't solve the cube. So on a cube by, on a 3x3, the color scheme goes blue, red, green, orange. So, on this cube, we have to make the centers blue, red, green, and orange. We have to make it the same. So otherwise, the cube is going to be un unsolvable. So, first, we're going to start off with the blue center, because that's first. And, ooh, this is a new case. So, if you see that these two, these two, this two, two centers are diagonal from each other, you can fix it by moving one of them up, Moving, moving this part across, and then move it back down. And you have made a bar. Now, let's find the other two. Here's one, and here's one. You can pair them together, so we can put this one up, and we can pair them. But we messed this up. So we, so we could turn this so that the bar doesn't get affected. Turn this layer twice, and then we have a bar here and a bar here. And to put this in the right position, all we have to do is this. And then the next color is red. As you recall, blue, red, green, orange. 
So we have red. We already have one bar completed, which is amazing. And we have two of the centerpieces right here. So we can turn this centerpiece left, and then we can turn this one right, and then we turn this left again, and then we can pair them. Make sure to move this bar away first. They're paired, but oh no, I messed up this bar. Well, what we could do is put, put this right up, turn it around, and then put the blue back down. We saw the full center, but we have two successful bars. Now, normally, now, you think you would, you would think that you would just make the, make the center like this, but it moves the blue. So, again, the same thing which you did with the yellow center, you have to move them on top of each other, then up, you two, down. And then we have two successful faces. Okay, so now for the last two centers. For these last two centers, it's going to be much easier as we all, will already have two bars pre-made. And if you're lucky, these two bars will also be made. But if you're unlucky, it's still good. So, we have these two. To make these two a bar, what we could do is just turn this green thing up, move it around, and put it back. And then we have two sets of bars. Now, we have, now, we could turn the orange up, and then turn the green, and put the orange here, and the green here, and we have four centers. Now it's time for edge pairing. Now, so if you want to pair an edge, you have to get it into this middle layer, because otherwise you can't pair if it's like up here. So we, so we have this blue edge, and we have this other blue edge. To pair them, put them both in the middle layer. And then, since they're both in the middle layer, to pair them, all we have to do is this, but the center's got screwed up. So we can just move it up, away and turn it back in and then fix the centers now we have one successful edge and we can put that and now put it in put it on the white side like f2l once you have paired your first edge you want to move it down to the white face like you'd move a normal 3x3 edge to the white side so just insert it like it's a piece of a white cross we are going to make a white cross but it's going to take much longer as we have to pair the white pieces first so our first paired edge now let's look at the other edges. Ah, there's a already a green, a green piece in the middle two layers. Now we can put this green piece into the middle two layers as well. But they're both in the same layer, and we can't pair them in any way. So what do we do? It's time for our first algorithm. Now, to, to pair these two, we're gonna have to swap this piece with this piece. So if we do that, then we can just pair normally like this. And to do that, we need to turn, turn this layer, we need to turn this layer left, and then do this alg algorithm. R, U, R prime, F, R prime, U prime, R, and then fix the centers, and voila, you have paired these two edges. Now, insert it into the cross like you would do usually, and you have now paired two center, two edges. There, now, there's already an orange piece in the middle layer, and then the orange piece is here, so we put them both in the middle layer, pair them like usual, put them up, fix the centers, and then fix the cross. And then we put this into the cross. Now we have the red. We have one red piece and another red piece right here. And put this red piece into the middle layers. And now these two are next to each other. So we do a flip the flipping algorithm. R U R prime F R prime U prime R, and then turn the and fix the middle two layers. And we have made we have made this edge. Now we can put it into the cross. Finally, now you have successfully finished the cross. Now we have to pair the rest of the edges. This process can get a bit tedious, but is more or less pretty easy. Now, see this red yellow piece and this red yellow piece are next to each other, so let's pair them. With so let's pair them with the algorithm. R 
u r prime f r prime u prime r fix the centerpiece and we have paired these two edges because they're both next to each other so we put them both in the top layer this is a very important step because we need room here okay so we have another two edges here and they're then they need to be flipped because they're across from each other so r u r prime f r prime r prime f prime then r and then fix the middle two layers and we have paired this now that you should have paired three edges it's time for one more because there's only one more space left here now look ah i found some there are two, these two pieces these are normal these are the normal case so put them together and move them up now we can't just move it up because it'll bring another one down so what we have to do is we have to move it on top of another one move the top face and bring the other one back now the top face is completely filled with solved edges now you'll most likely have one edge already solved if you don't same steps so look at your final few edges and you'll have to do them all with a flipping algorithm so if you see two like this across from each other do the flipping algorithm which you should know by now because it's said like a thousand times and then you have two edges left now you'll be forced to do these two differently because like you can't just put because this is the normal case but we can't do the normal case because this is what happens we put them together but we can't move it anywhere because both the bottom and the top is filled so what you must do is you must flip you must create the flipping algorithm case and to do this you must move you must do the same the same flipping algorithm to set up the case once you have done that you can just flip them again and it should be so and it should solve all the edges okay if you have two edges, you can't solve it normally, cause like this is this is the normal case. But if we try to do the normal case, we can't move it anywhere. So you have to flip, you have to flip one of the edges, but don't move this middle layer, because you just have to flip them from here to there, and we don't have to mess up the centers. So do the algorithm. You should know, cause it's said a billion times, and then do the normal flipping algorithm, except you move the middle piece again. And voila, you have completed all of the edges. Now, s start to solve it like a 3x3. Three three. Do not click off the video, because there are some cases which cannot be solved like a 3x3 three three and will need further guidance. So, I'm just going to do the F2L. You should already know how to do this, so I'm going to skip. After solving the 4x4 four four, like with F2L, it'll be on the last layer. Now, you, you, you could just get a case where you can solve it completely normal like a 3x3 three three. but sometimes look at this thing called parity and parity is when two edges are flipped the wrong way and to fix this you must do a parity algorithm now a lot of people complain about these parity algorithms because they're horribly long and frankly I agree with them it took me weeks to completely memorize them and I still can memorize them that much now there's two new cube notations you must learn this parity, parity algorithm, which is which is the lowercase r, it'll show up on the screen now. Lowercase r means turn both of these layers. And then the a, a two r two a two r means to turn this to the second layer. And two l means to turn this second layer. And that will also show up on the screen. And yeah, those are the only two notations you need to learn. Let's get into the algorithm. So for parity, what you're gonna wanna do is move to the two edges that are flipped and then do the following algorithm. Wide, wide R, U2, X rotation, which means move to the bottom relative to your perspective. Then R, U2, R, U2, R prime, U2, then L, U2, R prime, U2, R, U2, R prime, U2, R prime. And once you've done that, you can solve the top feet. You can solve all like normal. 
And then continue solving the cube as if nothing's wrong. And then once you're on the last part, just solve it like normal. Ah, another problem, PLL parity. The last, th the last parity algorithm before was OLL parity. Parodies only happen sometimes, and this is PLL parity. Now for PLL parity, what you're gonna wanna do is do the following algorithm. 2R2, U2, 2R2, double layer U2, 2R2, and then U, U, U2. And then you have solved the 4x4. Now you should actually feel proud because this thing is pretty thick. Unlike this. Oh, and fun fact, you can solve a 4x4 like a 2x2. If you mess, if you scramble it like a 2x2, you can just solve it like a 2x2. And yeah, uh, I will get a 5x5 five five and I'll also teach you how to solve a 5x5. Five five. Goodbye, I look forward to my 5x5 five five unboxing, which will be probably never. Oh, as always, thanks for watching this video. Comment, like, and subscribe, but you don't have to. And, and then please leave a like and hit the bell icon. Bye-bye.